everybody, we have to start, otherwise we'll be late for the meal. Okay. So first of all, I'd like to say um, Istanbul are hosh is, which is welcome to Istanbul, I'm reliably informed. Um, and the first thing that we'll do as we've done as some meat gatherings before is we'll have the, uh, the toast that we uh, normally have. So I'm guessing those are you're welcome to Yashmak Hotels and we'll have a toast to Dorothy Dunnett and absent friends. And to Simon and Allah. <laughs> so, cheers. Before we carry on, we're going to have a little word from uh, Merva Yalagosh, who is uh, our contact and has been for many months now at the Ashback uh, Hotel Group and has done a fabulous job of setting up so much for us. So, Merva, do you want to talk? So, um, as we start, we've got um, sieges from various places uh, around the world. Scotland, England, France, Canada, the United States, Australia, Ireland and Germany, which is quite a good, uh, quite a good turnout. And of course we have sieges from the non-Dunnet reading world. <laughs> They'll be receiving a little certificate uh, on the Sarnage meal on Wednesday of their uh, forbearance and braveness. In, uh, in this kind of, I think there are something like 25 or 27 uh, people who don't read really it with us, and that's a really good turnout. So welcome to all of you. Uh, we have some newbies. We're not quite sure who's a complete newbie, but we know that there are 39 people here that didn't attend the Edinburgh 2000, Philadelphia 2000, the Dublin O Spit, the New Orleans Yule Spit, the Siege of Malta, the Saddle event, the Congress of Alexandria, or Le Spit in Paris. But of course, you might have attended other events in Edinburgh, or around the UK, or overseas and other places, but some of you will be brand new newbies, and to those a special welcome. And we hope that the other people here will make you feel welcome. It's one of the reasons that we like people as much as possible to wear their name badges, so that people throughout the week know who other people are. And there are various little symbols on the name badges and you might be able to break the code if you, uh, if you try and hard enough. So anyway, welcome to the newbies. The other thing that I want to say is that you are allowed not to recognise anybody <laughs> that you have met before at previous events. You might have poured out your life story to them <laughs> in the bar in Malta in 2005 or last week in Philadelphia or whatever, but you were allowed not to recognise them. And nobody should be embarrassed uh, if somebody says, actually, um, we have met before and you did know me. Because if people are worried about that, it's a killer. So you're allowed. <laughs> And I say that so that I'm allowed. <laughs> so in the best Dunnett tradition, um, we have a cast of, of characters. So we have the rulers. <laughs> and vizier. And also Olive Billwood. <laughs> and we have the lower club. So Kathy Lewis. <laughs> 
tremendous, a tremendous help in organising this. There were, there were four, there was a management list for this thing, and there were four of us on it, Oliver, myself, and Kathy, and the other person was Tina Dallas as well. So, and never were able to step in should either of us fall under a bus, which fortunately neither of us have. So, yes, this time, yes. Uh, we also have our group captains. Now, as you may know, we're going to, well, you should know by now because you signed up for the groups. We're going to be broken up into six groups. We're, the streets of Istanbul are too narrow for us to get full-size coaches through. So we have midi buses and also we wanted to have a relatively small number of people per guide, 19 or 20 per guide. So we broke up into groups. And the groups themselves are broken up into groups. So there's the Istanbul set of groups. Uh, with Simon Hedges, that's me, um, sort of in overall uh, charge of that, and Mehmet uh, Imolu, who you'll be talking to, you'll be hearing from later on, who's our head guide. Uh, then we have within that the Gazelle group. Tila Dallas is, the, is our, the group captain of that group, so she's the, the representative of the Siegers within that group and is also the captain of captains. Um, we have Mikhail, mainly for those with mobility issues, I'll be in that one because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> but there'll be a little bit more transport laid on for those people. Um, so, uh, and we have the Gabriel group. Uh, so, and Jan Johnson will lead in that. Becky <laughs> Lee from the Carl group. <laughs> can those three group captains please stand up? So, can Tina stand up? Tina's over there. Moxon, please stand up. Yeah. 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 And Dan Johnson, please stand up. Yeah. So, you should know the streets you signed up for, so recognise your, your leader. They, will, they are the person to congregate around tomorrow morning. Your guides will be showing up as well, but of course you haven't got a clue who they are. Yet. So, hopefully they'll be recognised by the team leader. Kathy. Question. If uh, one has signed up for the Macau group without being aware of the mobility issue issue, uh, should re one let you know so that in case somebody who really needs to be on it can get a space if, if it's already Does anybody feel they should be on the Mikhail group who isn't in the Mikhail group? Okay, so no, but talk to me afterwards but if you have any other concerns. No, I have no other concerns. It's okay. just I don't want to take a place of somebody who no, really no. needs it. And you haven't. Okay. So that's great. Thanks for asking. Um, okay, so that's, that's the Istanbul set of groups. And the Constantinople <coughs> groups, uh, with Olive uh, in charge of the group. Uh, Selim Pula is the, is the head guide within that group, but not the overall uh, head guide. And there's the Archie group there, which will be led by the group captain, Kit Gordon. So can Kit stand up, please? Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, we have the Jarrett group, uh, led by, or the group captain is Jenny Francis. So Jenny. And we have the Marta group, uh, which is uh, as Marta We try, we try. Also, actually, the, the two guides that we have, the four male guides are leading the groups with the four male characters, and the two female guides are leading the groups with the two female characters. So, you know, thought into every little thing there. Yeah. So now do read your handbook about the, about the groups and about how things work out because sometimes one lot of groups is doing one thing and another lot of groups is doing another. Okay, and now um, we're doing this in association with the Dorothy Dunnett Society and I'd like to call on Jenny Francis who is the chairman of the Dorothy Dunnett Society to come up and say a few <coughs> words about it and while she's making her way to the podium I just point out we have a number of people on the, on the committee of the Dorothy Dunnett Society here. So there's Jenny herself, Barbara Milner, Suzanne McNeil, who's the Whispering Gallery uh, editor, uh, and some other committee members, and a number of former committee members as well. So, uh, Jenny, over to you. Um, okay, in the Welcome Pact, for those of you who aren't members, there are membership forms. Um, so I encourage you to join and give your membership form to Barbara. Barbara, do you want to stand up so people can find you again? Barbara is always happy to take your money. <laughs> Sometimes she likes us to spend it. Um, so some of the things that you get for membership, you get the Whispering Gallery magazine, which looks amazing, thanks to Suzanne's amazing work. We are funding a volunteer, Pam Keeling, who's here somewhere, who is working... Um, 
in the National Archive in Scotland uh, with the Dunnett Archive, helping to catalogue that. We give two history prizes annually, one to PhD students, which we're opening internationally for the first time this year, and one to the Edinburgh High Schools, and a bulk of other things that go on behind the scenes. We have merchandise, the unicorn brooches, which some of you may have seen, some of you have bought already. If you're interested, talk to, to Barbara or myself, and we can arrange for you to get one. We have some left over. Um, and we arrange things like this are arranged in association with the society and publicised through Whispering Gallery so that you get to hear about it and meet people who understand why you're going through the harem, peering <laughs> round the corner here and looking at this particular tiled fireplace when the guards think that you're mad and talking to each other on the radio going, what is the mad English woman doing? There's no one in here. Everyone else tiles fireplace, grills move on and there's me peering round the corner. <laughs> so yeah, you can talk to people who understand. So yeah, um, if you're not already a member, I strongly encourage you to join. If you are a member, thank you very much, and we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. well, the next, I think it's the next summit event. After there's Rye Day for, in the UK, but we are also having International Dorothy Dunnett Day on the 10th of November. Various events are taking place around the world, with a glass being raised at one o'clock local time to toast Lady Dunnett and all the good things that have come from her work. There's definitely events in London, Edinburgh, Gloucesterish area. Yes. You're doing San something. San Francisco, I think. Frisco, Frisco any, anyone, anyone know of any others? Yeah. 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 Bellingham, Washington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if there's nothing near you, then get in touch and organise your own event because they're great fun. There were 30 people in London last year. I don't think Waterstones Bar knew what had hit them. <laughs> we drank a lot, so that was good. We had nine people in Gloucester in a, in a, you know, in a pub. We just all met up. There's usually nothing very formal organised. Just a chance to get together and talk to it. So thanks very much. Watch the website, uh, dorothydunnett.org or dunnettcentral.org are, are the addresses. So, uh, yeah. Easy. And again, they will be publicised in Whispering Gallery. Yeah. Another reason to join. <laughs> So you have a handbook in your pack, read it, read all of it, it has a detailed schedule in it, it also tells you all sorts of other things about how to negotiate round, right around Istanbul, who to phone if you get into, tr into trouble, all sorts of things uh, like that, so that's the plug for that. Um, significant changes, um, the welcome meal this evening, not quite as described as regards to the menu, uh, but you know, it hasn't changed significantly. Um, a menu will be provided on each table showing the items and their ingredients and those of you who have notified us of special dietary requirements, uh, well we'll talk a bit more about that later, but you should have had a handout in your pack for all the events that are happening at the Ashmack Hotels. Um, <coughs> On day four, Thursday, we're changing around the order of things. We'll tell you a lot more about that on Wednesday evening, so don't worry about that now. Um, but it is, <laughs> it is important that there will be a meeting at quarter past five every evening. At that meeting, there is usually a talk, but the first sort of five, 10, 15 minutes of that meeting will be announcements. Don't be embarrassed to come along to the announcements and then leave before the talk. <laughs> Sorry people giving the talks, but it's important that you're here because that is the only main chance, or only real chance we have of notifying you of last minute changes. So it is important that you're here for all those meetings at the start. So does anybody have a problem with that? Here? Is it here? It's in this room. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Simon. Yes. Uh, Oh, it may already be up. Another change is, of course, the cost of the tram. Um, in the handbook, it's down as two. Oh, yes, the handbook says the trams cost two lira, which they did in May. Now they cost three. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so there are going to be the afternoon shuffles uh, on several of the days as well. You've already brilliantly signed up for the... Um, Tuesday afternoon shuffles with much less fuss than we could possibly have imagined. <laughs> um, you will be asked to do the afternoon shuffles the day before the shuffle. So that's another reason for turning up here for the meeting because at those meetings from now on, that's when you get to select your options. The options are all laid out in the handbook, but you will need to sign up here at this meeting at quarter past five in the evenings. So. 
Uh, okay, I think that's all I want to say about that. Uh, tips, um, your, um, your group captains will be talking to you about this. Some elements of the tips have been included in the, in the basic price, but there is a top-up element as well. Um, Tina has been talking to the other group captains, and advice will be given to you uh, on that. <coughs> we have, however, included nothing for the Bosphorus trip and the Dervish trip, but Tina's disseminating advice about that, uh, so you'll, you'll hear about that. So your group captains will advise on tips for drivers and guys, which will take this into account. Don't forget that if you, who knows, <laughs> when I wrote that. <laughs> okay, right, where to eat breakfast? If you are staying in the Yashmak Sultan or the Yashmak Comfort, you will eat in the Olive Restaurant. If you are staying in the Sultania, you have a choice of eating in the Sulta breakfast in the Sultania restaurant or the Olive Restaurant. If you are staying in the Romance, you will be eating breakfast in the Romance restaurant downstairs, I think it's downstairs. Um, and in the Olympiad, you will be eating breakfast in the Olympiad breakfast room. So only if you are staying in the Yashmak Sultan, the Yashmak Comfort or the Sultania do you get to eat breakfast in the Olive Restaurant in the Yashmak Sultan? Okay. Uh, if you've eaten the wrong place so far, don't worry about it. <laughs> the Sultan Spa. You'll have seen the Sultan Spa, the entrance of the Sultan Spa, as you came to this, this meeting here. It's beneath the Yashmak Sultan, and the Sultania, if I'm supposed to say that, has a sauna, swimming pool, massage, henna treatment, Turkish baths, you get a free plastic bag with every visit, because it's not one of those where you put your foot in the plastic bag dispenser, which is just so much fun. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> I was told not to say that. Um, within your pack, there is a plastic um, folder with various bits of information in. That has got um, more information about the spa. It also has a card that if you are staying in the various hotels, gives you slightly preferential treatment compared to the ordinary people who stay here. So bring that card um, along with you, particularly if you're staying in the um, Romance, the, Yash, uh, the Yashmak Comfort or the Olympiad, because it will get you some things free that you otherwise wouldn't have. There is a card in there, bring it with you. There's also, by the way, in that pack, um, a useful get me home um, <laughs> card that you can give to a taxi driver if you get completely lost. I'll talk a bit more about that um, later on. So, riding the trams. Um, there's some advice in the handbook about riding the trams. Uh, you can get jetons from the machines. They are three Turkish lira per per jeton and thus per journey. Um, if you change tram at any point or change mode of transport, you have to buy another jeton. So if you go from tram to ferry to tram or from tram to nostalgic tram or whatever, but if you stay on this side of the Bosporus, there's really only one tram that you're likely to use and that's the tram line that goes past the end of the road by our hotel. Okay, You can buy um, something called an Istanbul cart from a kiosk, particularly <coughs> the kiosk, displays an Istanbul cart sign, a back bill sign. It's a bit like an Oyster card in London, it's a plastic card. You load it up with credit and then you just swipe it when you go in. You get to swipe out, just swipe in each time you use it. It just deducts three Turkish lira. It costs 13 Turkish lira, um, so it's only worth it if you're going to do a number of journeys. But for those who might be staying on here after the siege and doing a lot of travelling around Istanbul afterwards, it's very convenient. Um, so there are kiosks that sell that at the Grand Bazaar stop, um, and also at the Emanuelu stop, and elsewhere. So. Taxis. If you're going to use a taxi, make sure you use a yellow licensed taxi. If somebody comes up to you and tries to persuade you to use a taxi that isn't, doesn't look like a yellow licensed taxi, don't get in. Always insist they use the meter. Watch out for something that's called a magic button, where the meter suddenly jumps in value because they've managed to press a hidden button behind the steering wheel or, or something like that. So um, if you're leaving the hotel, it's a good idea, th these hotels, get the concierge to book you a cab rather than go out on the street and try and find one of your own. Um, you will find that you are taken in the craziest routes around Istanbul and you might think it's a scam to wind up the meter and take you a long way. It might be, but it really might not. 
We've, we've booked like a, a taxi for an entire day or, or a transport for an entire day for a flat rate and they've still gone the craziest routes just to avoid the traffic or just because it's a one-way system. So you have no way of knowing whether they're doing that or not. And they're probably not, if they want to pick up more fares, but who knows. Um, they go like at really crazy speeds uh, here. The word yabash, I'm told, slow down. <laughs> Whether it works, I have no idea. Um, but they, they do go to go fast. And as I said, there's a card in your welcome pack. If you are staying at one of these hotels uh, to help you get back to the hotel, if you're not staying at one of the Yashmak hotels, then there is still some advice in the, in the book. And the general advice is ask to get back to the Gulhane tram stop because they should know where that is, even if they don't know where the hotel is. Okay, be on time or be left behind. So at 8.30 every morning, we're congregating in the Siege Lounge, and we expect everybody to be there at 8.30, not at 8.40 or even 8.35 or whatever. We, we have a lot of traffic in this city. We've got deadlines to meet, places to go. We are going to get delayed anyway, but we can't afford to be delayed further because someone's lying in or whatever. So we will go without you, just <laughs> so you know. And if you're worried about that, then be on time. And it won't be a problem. The same is true when there are rendezvous points and rendezvous times given you by your guides or by your um, group captains for, for the way back or for the end of lunch or for whatever. It's difficult enough trying to organise and manage a group of 115 people without people not turning up. So make sure your watch is set correctly. Make sure you know what you're doing. Um, the guides might be too nice to actually move off when they're supposed to move off. They're going to leave people behind. But the group captains won't be that nice. They're going to be vicious. So make sure that you are on time. Whips have been provided. Um, that's 17.50, sorry, yes, Alexis. Siege Lounge, is that where we had um, Yes, good question. Siege Lounge is where we had registration. Oh, right. So it's where we had registration, uh, so yeah. And it will have a sign on it from now on saying Siege Lounge. But the Siege Lounge, there might be too many of us fitting there. The Siege Lounge, the lobby area outside it. So try and get in the Siege Lounge. If you can't fit in, spill over into the lobby. Not a problem. We, we, we arranged the siege lounge because the lobby wasn't big enough to hold all of it either. But be there. So that's that. Okay. Um, 17.15 every evening. This meeting, again, please be on time. Um, departures for evening meals and events. Times vary for that, so check your, your handbooks for the times there. They'll be in there. As I've said before, be where your guys tell you to be, when they tell you to be there. Your group captains will be ruthless. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of you. <laughs> okay, <coughs> if you get lost, Istanbul is a huge city, but actually it's kind of not that big as well. The bits of Istanbul that we will be in don't cover a whole part of the city. It's like being in central London or in Manhattan within the whole of New York. Um, so don't worry too much. We're not going anywhere that isn't within a 10 mile walk back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only on one day, which is, which is the, the Thursday. I don't think it's even 10 miles, it's probably, it's probably seven miles or something like that. But if the worst came to the worst, you could make it back on foot, but please, you shouldn't need to. Find, if you're on this side of the Golden Horn, find the tram line. There's only one tram line, so it's not that hard to find on this side of the Golden Horn, the south of the Golden Horn, the old city area. Um, th this stuff about where to go where, this is in your handbook as well. So trams for Jabbar, go from the hotel, uphill to Sultan Ahmet, uh, and then past the Grand Bazaars, the walls. Trams for Kabatash go in the opposite direction. Gulhane is our stop. So stops are announced electronically on the tram, so that, so that you will hear a voice telling you where you are if you can't see the sign, or you can't work it out, or you don't recognise it. So if you get lost on the other side of the Golden Horn, that's Galata or Pera, if you read the alignment books, or if you're more of a modern person, uh, it's Bayolu. 
but it's on the northern side. Uh, and again, get, try and get to our tram line. The tram line is T1. Walk to the Ataturk Bridge, uh, get a taxi, use a public transport map, you'll find a way home, don't worry about it. It's actually not that hard. So, uh, and the tram you want is going to Bachula and get off at Gulhane. So, and that's the name of the station when you see it, Gulhane Estacioni, I think, which is probably pronounced absolutely terribly, but hey, <laughs> and use the hotel card if you have one. A little bit about pronunciation, which is rather embarrassing here in front of Mehmet, but <laughs> <laughs> the letter C is pronounced like the letter J. So if you're going to a jazz club, that's the kind of club you'd go to. Uh, it looks like a Kaz club, it's a jazz club. Um, GDC, Road Street Avenue, something like that. Um, the G with a little upside down crescent on is silent. So, Bayolu, the current Turkish Prime Minister is Mr. Erdogan. So, uh, Istanbul, you'll sometimes see a long I with a dot on the top. It's kind of an E sound. Um, crossing between an I and, and an E, Istanbul. But and this hasn't shown up. If you see an I without a dot, as in the end of top carpet, it's an U uh sound. I'm sure there are all sorts of variations that I'm not getting, and it's probably quite horrific what I'm telling you. But you know, it's what I go. <laughs> Thank you. It's what I go. If you want to know more on how I'm wrong, ask your guys. They probably speak Turkish. <laughs> So we're staying, or this, this here, in the hotel that we're at at the moment, is the Yash Mac. So S with a sedilla underneath is a sh sound. Um, a C with a sedilla is like the hard form of J. It's quite logical. So C is J, is J, but C with a sedilla is ch. So Chembalitash uh, is one of the tram stops and where the Pillar of Constantine is as well. Um, then we, we'll be eating tomorrow somewhere else. <laughs> I think it's So Cheshmi, So Kang. And the place that we're going to, we'll get the ferries from, is called, I think, Eminuna. But I'm not going to do the rest of the vowels because they confuse me. So anyway, <laughs> that's a little bit about Turkish pronunciation. But if you can get the consonants right, you might get away with the vowels. But uh, talk to your guides. In an emergency, the, the, the Europe-wide emergency number of 122, which actually works in the UK, for those of you in the UK who didn't know, um, should work. If you're phoning from a North American mobile phone, 911 may work too. It varies. If you're phoning from a UK phone, 999 may work as well. It varies. But the numbers are in your handbook. Ring the hotel, either the hotel's here, or if you're staying at a different hotel, ring back to your hotel and ask them for help. Ring Simon or Olive. Our numbers are in the book in an emergency. Not just because you want to know what kind of drink to have or what the menu options are. <laughs> Don't take risks. Health and safety is not always as high a priority here as it is in the countries that we come from. We'll be giving you so much information about health and safety when it comes to visiting the fortress of the Seven Towers that you won't know what to hit you. You may already have had a laugh as you've read about that in your handbook, but it's true and we are serious about it. We'll be talking more about that on Wednesday. But steps down aren't marked with a yellow line here, so watch, there are trip hazards, or you know, all sorts of things. So watch where you're putting your feet is generally good advice. And there are a lot of cobblestones here uh, as well. So is it safe? Is it appropriate? Um, Istanbul is a big city. It's like London or Paris or New York. It's not particularly dangerous, but use your street smarts. You know, don't think, oh, it's lovely and the sun's shining. No one's going to snatch my bag because they may. So put the strap over your head like you would uh, elsewhere. There are pickpockets around. There are scam artists. Stay in the tourist areas rather than going off to the outskirts of the city in some place where tourists don't normally go. All the usual stuff that you would find anywhere. Just be a bit aware. Um, dress appropriately in mosques. We said this online. So, you know, headscarves for women, take your shoes off. You will see other people dressing inappropriately uh, in mosques in the way that the people would not like them to locally. That is not us. So we are expecting our women to wear headscarves in mosques and to have their shoulders covered and we are expecting people to remove their shoes. Um, 
Yes. Like how long sleeves? How long do your sleeves have to be? I would think that would be okay. Okay, so t-shirts yeah, are yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just not bare sh not straps. You know, yeah. I think not bare yeah. shoulders would be the, would be the thing. Um, so, and again, it says that trip hazards, look where you're putting your feet. Okay, where to eat? Olive, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, so where to eat? <coughs> Some of you will have already been to the Bodrum restaurant, which is up near Sultan Han. If you want to know a bit more details about it, talk to me. Um, very nice local cuisine or European cuisine, whichever you like. The next one I can't pronounce, so yes, but still... why the Bodrum on it in particular? Why do you like the Bodrum? Oh, we like the Bodrum because of broken pots. <laughs> this is, we call it broken pots, so it's not its correct term. It's actually a dish that is cooked within a amphora shaped pot. It's cooked for quite a long time. They bring it to the table and it's set alight at the table. And it comes <laughs> bursting with flames. And then they, bat, they go through a very elaborate system of banging it until the, pot, the top falls off. And you can have a lamb, chicken or beef. And then it's between two and it comes with rice. It's very delicious. We had it the other night and it's very good. It's easily digestible, very, very good. The next restaurant is in, I don't know how to pronounce this, I call it Yeshil Ev. Yeshil Ev, yeah. Yeshil Ev. Very posh, quite expensive. I don't really know a great deal about it, but it's very, it's a very, very good reputation. I think Ingrid Hamershaw is eating there. If Ingrid wants to stand up, do you want to know about the... Come on, Ingrid, stand up. Thank you so <laughs> Be embarrassed. So, yeah, if you want to know about the yes, you'll have, ask Ingrid. You can sit down again now, thank you. It, it, oh. was, it was very nice, but it is quite expensive. It's, you almost go for the atmosphere more. It's a lovely garden setting yeah. to, the, to the Konak that we're going to tomorrow. Um, but to tell you the truth, we had really good PDA in a place called Palladium. PDA is kind of oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Palladium was fantastic. And the best kufta, which are the little meatballs, in a restaurant called Sare up on Ishtiklal Jadesi. So, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, and don't forget that place um, where you go down the stairs and around the corner and. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Sarah Garden restaurant. That's correct? The Sarah yes, Garden Sarah restaurant? Garden. We will be having lunch there tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow we are having lunch there. Delightful, beautiful setting, very nice, very near, very central, just down from the Isle of Fear, but up a very steep cobbled street. And other than that, look at the menus. We ate very nicely just down the road last night. New restaurant we haven't tried before. Excellent. So, what do you eat? Local. Local? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Turkish delight. You've just had it. Very nice, available everywhere in great quantities. The clava, again. And if you missed it, there's plenty more at the back. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't take it back. <laughs> so please help yourselves to Turkish delight. Uh, the clava, lovely sweet honey covered um, biscuits case. Also available from the Hafiz Mustafa shop. Shops, which is quite local, quite near here, but you go down some very steps into it. That's the one I went, I meant. Oh, oh that one. Shop. Right, okay. It's near the um, Sultan Arbor tram stop. Yeah. So there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a, a marble arch doorway with some steps down and a bookshop, just as you go through the archway on the right hand side. And uh, they do really good coffee at night there. All types of coffee. And when you go there, they bring you the menu. The menu is like an Asda ca catalogue. Yeah. <laughs> An Argos catalogue. Think Argos catalogue. Big menu at this place. It's really good. Just the puddings. It's basically desserts and and, and sweet sweet. It's, you know, we call it the pudding shop, but that's not the correct term because there is somewhere called the pudding shop. But it's really it's really good. But get there early because they sell out. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is true, isn't it? Okay, mezes. You'll be having mezes tonight. Are you all familiar with mezes? Yes. Small yeah. little dishes. Yes. Um, nice savoury little things, have a little bit of everything, try it. A little bit like tapas. That's tapas. 
That's really good. Okay, Sammy. Oh, we right. What? Yeah. What by? Look up. We're going to take you like carpets. Loads of carpet shops around. <coughs> Some of you have already bought carpets. I know Christiana has. So they, there are loads of carpet shops around. Go in, see what there is. They will do. Some of them are doing demonstrations of how to make carpets as well. So it's, it's very, very nice. Gold and silver in the bazaars. Well, anywhere. But gold and silver, very, very good. They're, it's very good quality. It's weighed for. They will weigh in the shops for you. It's very good. And you can, you can get some. You can get some really nice things here. And is it genuine or? Most of it is. I've not come. I've not. I bought quite regularly here, and I have not had a bad buy yet. So yeah, it is. Jewelry. Lots of bling around. If you like bling, buy it. Otherwise, see Georgina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, for those of you that are dressing up, want to dress up, we have Arabian night night outfits. You know, Some presents for grand, young grandchildren. Available in the Grand Bazaar. Great fun. Kathy, we will be demonstrating later. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever I know. But after the dress you gave me, I'm getting it back. Uh, Aladdin's lamps, you'll see these beautiful Aladdin's lamps hanging up in the beautiful lamp. If you get them home, buy them. <laughs> Depends if you get them home. Daggers could be difficult in your hand baggage or baggage with the current um, security problems. Spices. Freely available everywhere. You need to check what you can legally take back into your country. Different countries have different rules about what you can take back in. So you need to just check about what you could take. And please remember, don't put anything that's sharp into your hand baggage. Otherwise, it will get confiscated. Right, how to buy in the bazaars, <coughs> particularly. Bargaining in the bazaars is accepted. It's normal. You do it. However, if you need advice about bargaining, talk to Georgina, who's here at the front. <laughs> or myself. So talk, if you need advice about bargaining with the bazaars, talk to us or ask your guides. Your guides will give you advice. But it's nothing special if you've been to Egypt or, or even Mexico or, you know, or whatever. It's the, same, it's the same usual thing. But don't be afraid of doing it. Please don't be afraid of doing it. It's fun. Once you get the hang of it, it's fun. Okay. What not to buy because it's legal to take them out of the country. Antiquities, and this may include carpets. You need to check. Could, so a historic carpet, a carpet yeah. that was woven, you know, over 100 years ago or whatever, might qualify as an antiquity. So do be careful with that one. Um, grain products. Well, I, <coughs> these things on a list of, of, of stuff that is is. Um, officially, they're not allowed to take out of the country according to the Turkish sort of customs website and advice. But we know that people do. So you'll see spices down the bottom there. A lot of people have taken spices out of the country. Yeah. If you don't take a crate out, you know, <laughs> but I would imagine, and, and the, ask, ask your guys, but I would imagine that if you take a reasonably small amount of spices for personal use, probably no one's going to bother. But I can't guarantee that. That's the official, that's the official guidance. But we know that antiquities, they are big, big trouble, but we tend not to hear about people getting into trouble for these things. Can you read what they are? We can't see them here. It says grain products, <coughs> tea, cacao, which I guess probably means cocoa products. Cacao, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, coffee and spices. And the, the information came from turkey.pizahq.com slash customs slash. So, there we are. Right, right. Special diet. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. There's no red snapper, salmon, shellfish, crab, tuna at any of the meals. The only fish that is included in the meals is on the last night when sea bass was an option for you to choose. 
What so, was, well, I wouldn't actually, we're not absolutely completely sure about that, but those things are. <laughs> well, there's the phosphorus meal, which is going to taste some kind of fish, and they, they, we were talked about fish on one of the other nights. Things are changing a bit, you know, but those are not included, definitely. So tonight's meal here at the Ashmat, there will be um, on the table, there will be a list, as Simon said previously, of the dishes, what's included in the dishes, and if in doubt, ask your waiters. Okay. Right. For the rest of the week, the remainder of the week, there will be a coloured card system. We're not quite sure what the coloured card system is yet. <laughs> For instance, those of you that are vegetarian may be given a green card to put it by your plate so that the waiters know exactly what to serve you. So, so I don't know that these are the colours, so it might be that vegetarians get a green card, some of you who can't take onions might get a red card. And some of you might end up with two or three cards. <laughs> but this, and it will vary from restaurant to restaurant. Your, cap, your coach captains will be given the cards in advance. Hopefully. They will. They will. The coach captains should, will know who needs special cards. Please help us. Yes, come on. We, re <laughs> we really have had a problem with these. So please help us by looking at the cards and using them. <laughs> okay, fine, right, okay, I'm moving on. Right, the gala meal. There is an extra course at the gala meal. So this is very Food, it's so hard to tell you. I'll tell you more about this. Just read it. Just read it. Okay. There is an extra course. So, those who ordered a hot... No, Olive, we'll skip that. Okay, we'll skip it. We'll tell you about it by Thursday. You know, on the Friday, on the Thursday, or whatever. Okay. You can walk to the Caracol restaurant. It's up the Cobble Street again. You can walk there. However, there will be minibuses to take you if you've got high heels and you, or, and you feel like walking. We advise you at the end of the meal to take the minibuses back to the hotel. <laughs> For those of you that wish to walk, Mecca will be accompanying you. dark alleyway past the archaeological museum. <laughs> so do if you we do advise you at the end of the meal there will be buses to take you bring you back here. You may have to go around the round the wrap, you know, like half hour trip, but no, you won't because it'll be midnight, Olive, there won't be any traffic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, drinks. At, this is at, At the gala meal, a welcome drink is included. So when you get there, you will be offered a glass of wine, water or fruit juice. Okay, this is at the gala meal on Friday. At all of the times, you will buy your own drinks. You've got your little drinks lists in your, inside your handbooks, use them. Just write that. Tea and coffee is available at all meals, and decaffeinated coffee. Most meals. At most meals, okay. Tea and coffee is available at most meals. Decaffeinated coffee is available at the evening meals. If you need decaffeinated coffee, coffee, please see Denise Gallon. Denise Gallon is, is in charge of decaffeinated coffee. <laughs>
in a village in Mardon, which is up near the Syrian border. Mardon? Mardin, yes. Mardin, near the Syrian border. They're hand-stitched by the ladies who are working for a charity to support women's independence. Yes. So, so these scarves have been sourced in Turkey, stitched in Turkey, taken to the UK, <laughs> where Kathy Lewis valiantly hired on 150 <laughs> One might have a decaffeinated coffee. It's only at restaurants where they won't serve it to you. Denise will have a, uh, some sachets that you'll be able to mix with hot water. So <laughs> that's that. But try the, try the restaurant first of all. So drinks part two. Um, said before, alcoholics and other soft drinks available at all the organised evening meal and possibly at the lunches. But you will be billed per table. So the waiters won't do individual billing. For this, they didn't want to serve drinks at all, but we talked them into it. You will need to divvy up the costs between yourselves. What is said, there's a little, um, there's a little um, thing that will help you with that. It says in your handbook where you can write down um, the cost of drinks, or if you're going out for a meal on your own with other people and you want to do that, it's got place for starters, first courses, and so on and so forth. So, the restaurants would greatly appreciate it if you paid cash in Turkish lira. You may find that cards and other currencies are not accepted uh, in, those, uh, in those restaurants. They want to keep it uh, easy for, them, for themselves. Um, so, uh, we recommend that you either agree to split the cost evenly, or that you keep a note of the cost of what you order as you go along. You don't forget to tip the drinks as well. Uh, scarves, or just talks about those. And now we're going to have a few words from uh, Mehmet uh, Imamoglu. Is that how you say it? How do you say it? Imamoglu. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, for the last five minutes I'm thinking what to tell them, you know, because those guys know my city better than me. <laughs> That's for me to tell you, but let me introduce myself to you. You know, my name is Mehmet, and I'm going to be the head guide of the other five. And uh, the thing that I want to tell you is that I'm going to, do, going to be the representative of the organizer Anadol. And the reason that I am going to be with you starting from now till the end of the tour is you can come and tell anything that you want to. Because all the guys are responsible for not only the knowledges and the history, they are going to be responsible for everything that you may dream about. Means that you... <laughs> 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 You know, the reason that I'm telling you is do never hesitate to ask any questions, you know. Of course we are going to be focused on the Orte Danut. We are going to be focused on the history, mainly less, it's going to be from 15th to 16th century. But please ask me and the other guys also about the economy, about the current life in Turkey, about women's rights that I was about to mention, which describes yeah. a wonderful thing. About anything we are going to be in your, at your service for all along the week. And as I'm telling you, starting from now till the end of the tour, I am going to be with you, because me, and the organizer, uh, Selan, of the agency Anadol, we are going to <coughs> join every part of the tour, which means that, you know, we are going to be responsible for the Turkish part of the tour as an organizer. Please, thank you very much. You know, I was looking forward to see you, and I'm very happy now. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> And we're, and we're expecting our guys to talk to you not only about the history, but also about modern Turkey and the culture and the people uh, okay. in the wider context as well. So that's really good. Um, so, next one. Uh, so, some Anadol group. Um, we're using Anadol tours to organise events for the siege. Does anybody have any questions? No, nope, that's really good. Eileen <laughs> <laughs> has. Um, I should have known. I just wanted to point out with the trams, if you're at Eminunu and you have to go under the tunnels, make sure you come up at the correct side, because I ended up on the wrong side and I'd already put my chattel in. But a very nice man led me by the hand across the trams. Maybe if you're coming back to the hotel, you need to be on the, the landward side of the, um, of the rails. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, Kathy Lewis, I believe, is now going to say a few words yes. to you, but I'll let her have to leave. Yeah.
<laughs> at this point. Oh, yeah. so, uh, so we'll see you at the meal. What time's the meal? 7 <laughs> Sure they've gone. Lock the door. <laughs> so what are we really doing? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Make some whiskey. Right. Okay. The what if they listen? They're never, you never hear anything good, do you, if you listen? No. <laughs> I'm Kathy Lewis, and I think that you have all um, received my emails about a thank you gift for Olive and for Simon. Um, if you have any queries about those later, perhaps you could come and ask me, but I'm just going to very quickly go through how we're going to gather the money. Now, I think I've got a good system. What we're going to do is we're going to collect the money via the bus captains. So that's uh, Kit and Jan and Tina and Betty and Jenny and, and Martin. They've all got a special purse and tomorrow, Tuesday, they are going to pass that purse round the bus. The idea being is if we can collect tomorrow, it means that later on in the week when perhaps we're collecting for guides or tips, it doesn't all get too confusing. So tomorrow. Now, please feel free to give whatever you like. Um, there is no rule. But a lot of people did ask me um, about a guide idea. So I'm saying... Um, uh, Five pounds per person in sterling, if you would like to pay in ster sterling. I think it's 14 per person in Turkish lira, or uh, eight dollars, I think, in Canadian American dollars. And I, you know, off the top of my head, I can't remember the euros. But each one of your bus captains has got a little guide, and so we'll be able to tell you. We'll take any of those currencies. My <laughs> husband travels the world, James, and he, and we, we can use them anywhere. Yes. That is per person? Um, it, it, it's five pounds per person, so that would be ten pounds altogether. Um, Fourteen Turkish lira per person, twenty-eight. But your your bus captain will be able to advise you on that. So, um, I have, where was I? So, so that's how we're going to gather the money. Um, if for any chance you don't get an opportunity to donate tomorrow and you would like to do so, please come and find me and I'll always have a little purse in my bag to, to collect. Um, Can you say a quick word about the buses that Simon and Olive will be on? Ah yes, now the buses that Simon and Olive are on, um, Betty is the bus captain for Mikhail, which Simon will be on, and I, I don't know where, which one Betty is going to be on, but I am told... On oh, yours. Oh, well done, Kit. <laughs> so I have actually told both of them that if they see anything going on that they don't know about, they are to turn a blind eye. <laughs> I mean, the cloak, uh, can you imagine if Simon thought something was going on? He'd, he'd be in there, wouldn't he? So I just said, there will be things going on around you. Expect it. Don't ask questions. So I think we've got them covered. <laughs> Be a bit discreet, but don't worry. Yes, if, but you don't know. worry. Yes. yes. Do you have any idea what we're getting? Oh yes. Oh. Oh. Let, let me let me. In fact, let me just tell you about the, 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 the autograph books, and then I'll move on to the gifts. So I thought about cards. Imagine how big the cards would be, and how difficult it would be to hide those from them. <laughs> so what I've done is I have purchased two leather autograph books, which have a, 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 a personalised little gold plaque to each of them, and there's a few little photographs stuck inside. And what I intend to do is hand those to, to your bus captains as, as we go along in the week to pass around for you to sign to leave any message that you would like for Olive. And Simon, I thought that would be a, a rather lovely gift for them to look back at. Now the gifts themselves. Simon had mentioned um, uh, on a previous trip to Istanbul several times how he liked a particular engraving. In fact, quite pointedly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> it actually was absolute serendipity. Back in May, I think there was myself and Olive and um, it was Betty and, and Pam. We were at the Cora Church, which we're all going to be visiting 
they, uh, Simon was doing something in a restaurant and we were trotting to go in the church and we found a little shop and in this little shop there was lots and lots of engravings. So we had a look and the first one I took out was the engraving, it's obviously a copy of, of, of this particular scene, it's about this big. Then I found, or we found, three more. One of the, the aqueduct of Valens, one of the sisters with a little boat in the darkness going through it, and the third one was the Galata Tower. So we put all our money together, <laughs> bought it, and Pam smuggled it onto the... Onto the <laughs> I took them back to the UK, where I had my, um, my local town framer frame each one, in matching individually. They are really very pretty. I bought one, and my husband James photographed the other three. <laughs> so that poor Simon doesn't have to cart them. <coughs> yes. um, for Olive, for Olive, I have to thank Georgina, Olive's friend and roommate, um, because Olive, I thought perhaps she might like some jewellery, and I sent Georgina to find out what surreptitiously what Olive might like. Well, it turned out she didn't want jewellery. She's been longing for some sort of iPad. Is that yeah. not the case? Mm -hmm. And um, so Georgina phoned me, and I thought, let's just get her what she wants. So she has got a beautiful iPad, which Georgina purchased and um, has smuggled over in <laughs> Now, there may very well be a little extra money. If that's the case, um, my husband, the banker, will sort all that out and we will, uh, with your permission, present that to them. Um, it may not necessarily be now, it might be when we return to the UK, but I will email everyone um, and let you know what the final is. And, and Georgina and I have all the receipts, we'd be delighted to show you them. <laughs> uh, and other than that, I can't think of anything. Is there any, anything else I can... Oh, oh, the chess pieces. Does anyone remember the broken yes. chess? Yeah. I, I was in my local um, store and I found these sort of ornamental chess pieces. Uh, a king and a queen. They're about this, a bit like those, you know, those pepper pot yeah. things. Um, and, and I bought a, a queen and a king because I thought that would be great to give them those. And then the top fell off the king. <laughs> and and I, I emailed all the British sieges and said, could you go and see if you could get one? Couldn't get one for love and money. So my daughter, Madeleine, who's here, um, made one out of clay, baked it oh, in our oven, oh, painted it, stuck it on top, oh. and then we transported it with a half a Coke thing. <laughs> I hope someone appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that's it. So if you have any, I know maybe but you probably want to go and do what you have to do before the meal, but if you have any questions, or anything, please don't hesitate to come and find me, or Georgina, here, yeah. um, and we'll be happy to help. <laughs> 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 that's all right.